Hello everyone, this is a tutorial for how to import backgrounds into Rhino to trace uh, scans or previously existing geometries and drawings. So the first thing you'll want to do in your Rhino file is check your units. Um, so if you come down here, you'll see I'm in inches, which is appropriate for this exercise. You could also be in feet if that's your preference, uh, but if you are in feet, just make sure that you uh, change your scale factor appropriately when we get to that step. Um, the other things you're going to want to take a look at are your layers. So you can get around this by using the Project 3 template, but if you've gone further than that and you're you're not there, just make sure that you set up enough that you can line with a drawing going from darkest to lightest um, using these settings here. Last, let's take a look at the OSNAP settings and your guides. So your guides are located at the bottom next to your units and your current layer. Uh, you can see in 2D drafting, I like to have uh, planar, just to keep everything uh, in the same plane and flat. Orthographic for your vertical horizontal snaps uh, and smart track um, to better align things. Also ensure that OSNAP is on and we can move into the settings there. Um, Endpoints are the ends of lines. Uh, near means that you can track any point along a line. Midpoint is the midpoint along a line length. Uh, and intersection is any time there's an overlap of two lines that exist on the same plane. Uh, I like to have those checked. I would recommend the same settings, um, at least as a starting point going forward. So now that we've gone over um, our kind of file setup and are oriented in our model, we'll move into actually importing our information. So there's a lot of ways to do everything in Rhino, um, but since we're using a PDF, the cleanest, most straightforward way for us here is going to be a uh, simple import. So you'll either type import as, as a command, um, and that'll bring up this dialog box, or you can manually navigate there by going file import. Um, sometimes your file picker will be defaulted to either 3DM or the last import instance uh, that you may have done. So I would recommend setting it to PDF since we know um, that's the file we're looking for now, or just all supported files so that you can uh, navigate to the file you're interested in. When you click open, you'll see this dialog box appear that's asking you to set the import scale of your PDF. So with preserve units selected, we're going to convert one inch in the PDF um, and since we know these were drawn at one eighth of an inch equals a foot, we know that one inch in the PDF is equal to eight feet. But our Rhino units are in inches. So we multiply eight by 12 for this conversion, and we click OK. And you'll see as that geometry comes in, it comes in at what should be the correct scale. Um, so the next step is going to be checking the scale of this drawing against our measured or assumed kind of um, Rhino geometry here. So we're now going to scale again this imported section to our Rhino controlled geometry. And the first step of that is orienting our plan in the same way so that this section can maintain uh, its vertical orientation with its ground down. So you can see over here, I've rotated the plan that we've assembled 90 degrees so that as we take a section through this terrace space, we can see um, our ground plane is oriented at the bottom uh, of my screen. So now that we've done that, we'll go ahead and switch to our construction lines. And at this point, I've noticed I've imported my uh, import geometry onto my lightest uh, line layer, which is not where I want it. So in the event that that happens, um, it's very easy just to select an object, right click the layer you want it to uh, be on, and change object layer. You've probably done this um, while you were line weighting your orthographic drawings back in project one. So it's not really new information, but it's good to know that you can move uh, forward and backwards between layers. So I'm going to now switch to my construction line layer since everything I'm drawing going forward is going to be on that. Um, and I'm going to start to set up some reference geometry from the existing uh, Rhino plan that we've created here. So I'm going to grab the edge of this building and drag that down as my first line of reference. And then I'm going to grab the point where the terrace meets the column at the side of that building for my second reference line. And you'll see I'm using smart track here uh, as I line up with that endpoint and 
drag this line across. That white line indicates that these lines are ending at the same length. Um, I'm also cutting my polyline operation short by right clicking. Um, polylines can kind of, you know, go on however you want, but if you right click, you'll end it at a line segment. Another nice Rhino shortcut is right clicking to repeat an operation. Uh, instead of navigating over here and clicking that line uh, polyline tool or typing polyline, I just right click and I have that tool selected. So we'll go ahead and grab the outside face of this column um, for our last kind of reference line along this. Okay, so I have kind of three points of reference. Now I'm going to move my section over to this geometry uh, and see if things line up. Theoretically, um, if this is uh, if each drawing is drawn correctly, this should line up uh, without problem. Also assuming things have been scanned without any sort of distortion um, and there's no issues. You can see at the very least, vertically, things are aligned, so we don't need to correct any rotation. Uh, again, you can tell the outside face of this building uh, along this pochet is not rotated in any way where our Kind of lines are cropping over it so that might look something like this right you can imagine you bringing something that you scanned in and your vertical um, lines in rhino don't line up with that you would have to fix that rotation but this seems to have been drawn and scanned in vertically so we can move on to the next step which is checking that our distances uh, from our construction lines and control geometry line up with our scan so Edge of building looks like we're maybe missing the edge of the building slightly there, but it's hard to tell. Uh, and then definitely here, what should be the column line lining up with our control geometry is overshooting in the scan, right? So from here, we will have to um, assume what we've drawn is correct and scale our scan accordingly. So once you select your scan, you can type the scale operation and it will ask you to set your base point. So since both our geometry um, and the scan share this edge, we're going to set that as our first reference point. Then we're going to drag this line across over to our drawing. And since this is scanned geometry, there's no smart tracking or points for it to snap to. So you're just going to have to be as precise as you can. Um, to line up with the middle of that line thickness and scale it back. The same will go um, largely for any time you're moving or interacting with this scan. Um, so as you move to line this up in the first place, uh, you know, using that move command, wherever you select, make sure it is in the kind of middle of that line thickness before you try to line it up with things. So that was a scale operation. And it seems to have brought our building edges um, in line across our drawing. And we can check our work by ensuring that our grid now accurately falls on a 30 foot grid, which we know from measuring and also the research that we've done in plan. Um, and just, you know, as common knowledge that building five follows that kind of um, bay logic. So we can offset this by 30 feet. And you'll see uh, we very accurately are lining up uh, with each of these grids, which means we've corrected uh, our scale issue and now uh, are correctly scaled horizontally. So we also will want to check at this point that our uh, vertical proportion is accurate. So now that we've rescaled things um, from kind of the true scan, we'll also want to ensure that um, things vertically are lining up uh, with what we know as geometry. So I'm going to select this horizontal line and you can see our section pretty clearly spells out uh, 14 foot height. So I'm going to offset that line by 14 feet. And you can see the scan now undershoots that 14 foot mark, which means we need to scale it. But if we scale this like we did the last operation vertically, we're going to end up with a horizontal stretch as well. So what we need to do now is a scale 1D operation and only affect the vertical axes. So type in scale and then 1D and then the operation is largely the same. So select your scan, set your first reference point, 
second reference point being the incorrect length, and then drag or stretch that to the length that you know is correct. And that should result in a accurately scaled vertical uh, scan with a 14 foot height and an accurately scaled horizontal length uh, of 30 feet. So we now have our scan lining up with our Rhino control geometry um, in a clean uh, orthographic relation so we can begin to draw our section uh, in this space off this scan using our line weights, moving from darkest in the pochet to uh, medium in anything that we're kind of seeing projected in elevation, and last, of course, lightest being maybe anything that you can see along the surface of that projected elevation. So I'm going to pause the video here and check back in with you when we have some geometry to deal with.